Cradly is a service and platform company uh, that is focused on the issuing and curating and receiving and managing digital credentials, uh, which are often today known as digital badges. The concept of digital badges is a way to reward achievement, and it can be any type of achievement. It can be a commemoration of, a, of an event, or on the other end of the spectrum, it could be a certification, uh, a, a clear uh, designation that you know something or have earned something uh, along the way. And it is a movement that has been led by groups like the MacArthur Foundation and the Mozilla Foundation and groups like Credly and others, um, and uh, now in a, a, an area which is known as competency-based education, to give people credit for what they know on a more granular level. So you don't necessarily need to have a degree or a diploma to be able to show that you have a particular skill. And when we talk about a digital badge, there's the icon, and I think you'll see at this conference the icons are, um, will, are pretty nice, and there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to represent that, that badge. Um, so they become collectible, they become fun, they become things that you share on social networks. But the badge itself is really made up of data, important data, uh, like the description, the criteria, what it took for you to earn it, who the issuer is, because the name behind it and the, the validation that who gave you that credential is really important. But the other thing that comes with it is some evidence. So the, the ability to attach a, um, a document or some record of what you actually did in order to earn it makes it a very valuable piece of, of, um, of currency. The badge itself is made up of, of data and there's a standard behind that data. Um, and we all work within what's known as the open badge standard, uh, which was developed um, by the Mozilla Foundation years ago as an example of the kind of data that we all should collect. And it's pretty simple. And the, uh, the key behind it is that you can build around it. So in the case of Credly, um, we add some fields uh, for, say, a testimonial which allows you to personalize that and add that to the, uh, to the metadata. And so um, that evolution um, will go on, but as long as you meet that standard and have that core metadata, then that badge should be able to be transported anywhere that you take it, um, that you want to take it. When the badge is displayed and somebody clicks on it, it takes you back to the, uh, the storage area, the, uh, the area where that metadata is kept. So um, that assertion link, as it's called, when somebody clicks on the badge and it takes you back, is a critical part of the metadata because it proves that somebody valid has given you that badge. And then the data you see there could be any type of evidence. Um, in our case, we, use, we have uh, PDFs, we have uh, links to websites, uh, audio, video, um, images, uh, the uh, uh, Cooper Hewitt National Design Museum um, always does some, some uh, video or graphics about, with the programs that they're doing with kids. So the evidence can become uh, either a test score, but it can become very creative and very interesting. And to be able to show the work behind what you did to earn that badge is a real advantage um, versus the, you know, the paper resume as we, as we know it. Today, it's very common to share those badges on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter um, or to move them into an e-portfolio uh, where you're curating uh, just like you would a resume. What's interesting is when um, you don't get to do this with your, with your college transcript, right? When you go apply for a job, you can put together your resume and base it on who you're applying to, what you're applying for, you manage that. And um, even on LinkedIn, you only have one. Right, so on LinkedIn, you have one um, self-reported um, single um, resume. In, with, with your college transcript, it would be great to go in and, and pull out the ones that don't matter for a particular job. Um, the badges give you the ability to curate that, to put together um, a, a website or be able to put together a portfolio that shows the skills that are important to that particular uh, job or, uh, or opportunity that you have. In addition to the education and the learning part, um, there's an identity piece. And when you look at how people identify themselves through, um, it's, it's almost um, like tribes and leaders and um, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts are just a really great example. But so are Harley Davidson earner, um, owners, right? So they all have these groups and the badges also help with that identity. To say that you've come to a conference for the last 10 years and have a commemorative badge from each of those, those 10 years says you're really committed to that space. There's no hard skill that you're using that badge for, but you're saying a lot about yourself for having 
done those things. What we found in the first three years of this movement uh, is that adults understand digital credentials a lot faster than kids do. Um, and part of that is that the adults already have a way to get credit for that learning. Right? So posting it on uh, LinkedIn or posting it on Facebook or making it part of their own internal uh, internet site so that you can see the profile of what I've learned is something that adults understand and they immediately get, uh, get credit for that. And we're seeing, um, we have thousands of higher education issuers in the systems that we provide, and uh, almost all of them have started in a professional development way, either badging their summer institute um, and making those connections and tying the evidence to it um, and, and sort of completing that cycle, which, is, which, has, been, which has been really nice. Um, with kids, they're a little bit slower, um, and uh, I don't want to get too much trouble here for this, um, but you know, we did a project with the New York City Department of Probation. And we used badges as a way uh, with kids who the only opportunity that they had for community service was to go to a park, a single park in Queens. And uh, then the, uh, when they went to meet with their um, probation officer, the probation officer would call down, find out on paper what the kid had done. And that was, that was the loop. Um, what we did in this pilot was we gave the kids other opportunities with cultural institutions in New York City to go volunteer, to do projects and get credit for it, and also get credit for doing um, good deeds um, and helping others. And they all used the badges. They were able to see their badges on their phones, but it still came down to what did the badge mean? It's sort of like the adults are counting using badges. Okay, we'll do that, but how many hours did I just get credit for on my community service? So there had to be some kind of tangible thing in order for the kids to, um, uh, to pick that up. So I think in the adult world, we're seeing it happening a lot faster um, than we see it happening with, um, uh, with kids. Digital badges, I think, um, in, in many ways are a lot like um, prior learning assessment. Um, I've um, gone through a, a number of programs. I went through the University of Maryland University College and was trying to map out and match up my work experience to courses. Um, and it was a tedious process. In fact, it's a course, it takes a semester for you to put together that, that portfolio. Um, and what I really found um, was that I had CEU credits for 20 years from all the jobs I had where I took training and I was a you know, general manager and a president and a, a, a CEO of a public company. And all along the way I had this training but I couldn't find it. Uh, and I think the, the real key to having this, um, collecting these badges along the way, is that they're permanent, they always belong to you, and you can show those skills that you've collected along the way as assessed um, as you've done it. I still think that prior, um, uh, that assessment of prior learning is still a difficult step for people, and hopefully this will make it easier for the next generation to try to pull that evidence together. Competency-based education is designed to look at every aspect of um, an area of knowledge, something that you need to learn or know, and break it down into the individual components and then assess against it. So in, uh, there's two really interesting areas. One is just that idea of what are the skills that you need to complete a certain task or have within a certain job. Um, and then the second area is how do you prove that you have those skills. So in the normal model, the older model, you would go to school, you would take the class, you'd pass the test. Um, and you would get credit for overall what was underneath that banner of the, of the course. Now you can break that down and say along the way you learn to do this skill, this skill, this skill and have it assessed either through a test, it could be assessed by peer review, um, it could be what's on a sort of direct assessed where somebody that knows you, sees you do it um, and can vouch for you, you get that that credit and then earn the, um, you can earn a badge that goes along with it, but it's really not about the badge. The badge is this really interesting moment in time when you've accomplished something, you've achieved something, you get the recognition for it, 
And the biggest part of this whole movement that needs to develop is the recognition of the badge. It's your employer saying, I see that you have that skill, it qualifies you for a raise, a different job, allows you to keep your job, um, so, uh, something along those lines. Um, so the, the badge itself, that icon, becomes the smallest part in the continuum of achievement and then rewarding and then getting something for having completed that achievement. In higher education, the accrediting bodies will come along slowly. And again, it's not the badge. Right? And I think that's one of the things that we learned right away and we stopped saying badge um, because it almost sounds trite. It makes people think about um, Boy Scout and Girl Scout badges, which are not trite themselves. There's real learning and real skills that each of those badges um, uh, means. In higher ed, the movement for competency-based education uh, is really the key. And how we keep track of it and the badges that are associated with it and the data that come with it um, will follow. So I'm not really worried about whether or not they're ever going to recognize badges. As long as they're recognizing the competencies and the skills, how we keep track um, what really um, doesn't really matter. As long as in the end you get credit for what you know. On the um, competency-based education side and workforce, which is a really fascinating movement and it's a lot like uh, what we see with, um, with community colleges in general where if you are part of a community college, you know that they're in touch with local businesses, they know what the education needs are for the employers in the area, and then they match up their courses with what's needed. And it could be anything from you know, cars um, or um, uh, uh, auto manufacturers to, uh, to healthcare, the community colleges always have like a finger on the pulse and have those connections. And when they're really good connections, they actually get funding from the businesses to tie those courses all together. In competency-based education, there's two really good examples. Uh, we're working with a group called Brandman University, which is out in California. And they went and talked to the employers in their area and mapped out the competencies, the skills tied to particular uh, jobs and built a, essentially a BA program um, that was uh, addressing the needs that the employers in the area had. And, and the employers are actually sending students into that program. So it's a, while it's a pilot, it's part of this movement where they're giving these, the students credit along the way for these competencies and um, issuing badges as they, uh, as, as they go along. You hear the same thing from others in the competency-based area like um, the College for America um, and, uh, and, and others. And um, the big issues that they're facing are how do you administrate uh, or administer those courses. You know, you need a new learning management system that deals with competencies versus courses. Um, you need to get the financial aid right because now financial aid should come in much smaller increments than it has in the past. Uh, and that's a, that's, I think that's a really good sign for the way that people learn. They go to find the skill that they need in order to, um, what did somebody said, somebody from um, mentioned said, um, find a job, um, uh, get a raise and keep your job are like the three you know, most important things. And in corporate training over the years, we do a lot of corporate training. We do all the badges for uh, Training Magazine um, and their uh, events. In corporate training, there has always been this uh, idea that people drop out. Um, but having been through corporate training all my life, that's not really the case. You get what you need, you get the book, you learn what you went in to learn, and then you go back to work. The CEU credit, whatever happened, didn't matter. Now with badges, hopefully it will matter a little bit and it'll be easier for you to keep, to keep track of. For us, it's almost like a triangle. It's that you've got the, the earner that is earning the, the achievement. Uh, you have the issuer and that relationship between the issuer is really important. Um, not only does it mean something when um, I earn a badge, but from the issuer you're saying something about yourself um, that you are recognizing the, this person for what, they, for what they've done and you're putting your name behind that. Um, and now you're doing it not by giving them a paper certificate that hangs on a wall no one will ever see or a cubicle. You're putting it out there where people can see what it is that, um, that uh, you do and what the earner has done. That there's a third piece which is the observer and that's the slowest piece that is to, to come along is that people are watching this but until you can look and say a person with this uh, skill and with this badge and this credential has proven it in, in a workplace or proven it in some uh, in some other uh, venue 
to the observer, to the employer, for instance, um, then um, uh, until that happens, until we have some really good examples of that happening and people following through, then it, it's still new. It's still a, uh, it's still you know, nascent in this uh, in this in, in this environment. We've seen it in some very interesting places. Um, the museum space is great. We've done badges for five different museum organizations, so you can go look and see somebody who's a museum professional with badges from uh, the um, American Alliance of Museums, the Museum Computing Network work from uh, Hewlett Packard or the New Media Consortium showing off the skills that they've picked up. So when you start to see that, um, those six or seven badges, that's phenomenal. Um, it's also nice when you see organizations joining together and uh, recognizing each other's credentials. So there's a badge out there, um, which is a New Media Consortium, uh, University of Central Florida combined badge where they're recognizing that. The most important part of this movement has been the conversations that are happening. That by talking about badges, you can get into the Clinton Global Initiative with people that you would never get a chance to meet and start to think about how we can work together. It's almost like stone soup. You know the story of stone soup? You say, we're gonna do a digital badging project and everybody comes running. But it's really so, can you provide this skill? Can you provide this resource? How do we put it together so for the earner and the, and the issuer and the observer, we're making this really great, uh, great stew. But we're still at that point. But when you say digital badges, people come running. But the last thing we want people to do is say, we're uh, starting a digital badge program. It's, that's not what you're doing. You're starting an education program with, people, uh, with, with people's best interest in mind and you're using the digital badge as a way of recognizing that achievement along the way.